CJ Pro beginner tutorial for the MacBook. If you watch my videos before, you know that I teach how to DJ with the iPad, but in this video, we're getting rid of the iPad and we are DJing with the app for the MacBook. The first thing I wanna show you guys is how to add songs. This is the screen that you're probably gonna see. It might be a little bit different if you have some other stuff selected, but the difference, the biggest difference between this app for the MacBook and the app for the iPad is you have a bigger view of your music library and your music sources. So to select your music source is over here on the left. The first one is going to be your playlist. I made a video on how to make those playlists. I will link it at the end. The next one is your Apple Music Sources. There's a couple of different streaming services that you could use that I would recommend using for this app. And Apple Music is a great one. There's also Tidal, SoundCloud, Beatport, and BeatSource. And then they also give you some music to start with. So that's what I'm going to use for this example. Over here, the DJ symbol is the music that they give you. So to load a song, what you are going to do is find whichever song that you want. What you could do is you could double click it to add it to a deck that is not being used. Or you could simply drag and drop. We're going to drag and drop it. You could either do it up here or down here. Either way, it does the same. And then if we go over here, we can load it in to the other side. So that is how you load up songs. If you want to get started DJing on any software, it's very important to know how to load up the songs so you can at least start playing songs together. You don't have to know every transition. You can let one song play and then just play the next one if you are just starting out. So that is how you are going to load up your music. Now I want to show you the features that you get here and then also how to expand it and get to some other more advanced features in the app because you have a lot of control and customization with this app just like you do on the iPad. I'm going to go over all of these buttons, knobs, and features. All right, starting up here, top left, this is going to be your gain control. This app has a great auto gain feature, so you may, you're probably not going to use it. It's a really small button, just like it is on the iPad. Really small knob, kind of hard to use, but it is there. And then below it, you're going to see the levels. This is going to let you know if you're redlined. Down here is our crossfader. In the middle, both songs are at the same volume. All the way to the left, it's the left deck. All the way to the right is the right deck. And then you could slowly blend it in. I don't recommend doing that for regular mixing. And it's more for scratching and doing DJ tricks. The way that I would recommend blending songs is going to be here. These are your volume sliders. They're kind of small, but there is a way to make it bigger. I'll show you that after. Next is going to be over here. We have a kind of horizontal mixer section, which is cool, easy to use. We have our filter here. It's going to either take out the highs or take out the lows and add a little swooshing song. A lot of electronic music uses the filter, so it's a great way to do nice, smooth mixes with EDM and electronic songs. Next, we have our EQ. So lows, mids, and highs, bass, mids, and highs. Most people, if you see DJs mixing, even old school DJs, they have the mixer there. So this is gonna be a way to blend in music. If you're just starting out, you don't really have to use it that much, but as you get more advanced, you're gonna be using it a lot. So get used to these knobs over here. And then here we have we have a way to switch from regular EQ to the Neuromix EQ. What Neuromix does is it's going to take out whatever part you want to take out of the song. So you could make it an instrumental only or make it vocals only. Great for doing mashups. I will make a separate video on all the advanced features of Neuromix, but you could switch your EQ like that. Also, an easy way to do Neuromix is over here. We have a little slider, so you could select to have either just the vocals or just the instrumentals, and then you could blend it in with this slider works really well and that's the easiest way to do neuromix it doesn't really take any skill or knowledge of how it works just simply vocals no vocals and then you could also change it from instrumental to tonal i will talk about that in the neuromix specific video next we have over here these plus and minus are ways to fine tune and adjust the the where the track is so if you're doing beat matching you want two songs to be lined up you could easily kind of nudge the track that way it works pretty well you notice there are no jog wheels here so there's no jog wheels which may look kind of weird you're used to seeing jog wheels or vinyl while you're djing i'll show you how to get that 
after, but I'm just showing you what's going on here. We have our BPM. You wanna mix two songs at the same time. They have to be the same BPM or exactly double or half. This is how you adjust it. Again, this is a really small, hard to use BPM slider. So you it might take some getting used to, or you might feel more comfortable just using the sync button. Look, this is 133 BPM, this is 126. If we tap the sync once, it is gonna bring it to the exact same BPM, so you don't have to worry about getting it, it there with the mouse and on this small slider. And then if you press it again, it will turn sync off. What sync does is it uses the technology to try it's best to match the songs up perfectly, just like you did a manual beat match. It doesn't always get it right, but it is a good skill to have. Next is going to be down here. We have a really easy way to set a loop. What it's gonna do is you could either go all the way down to kind of bounce the track, or you could go all the way up, do a four bar loop, an eight bar loop, 16, 32 bar loop, and this is a great way to set loops, make sure the song doesn't end, do DJ tricks, blends, and stuff like that. Next is gonna be over here, set and then jump. So these are gonna be temporary cue points. So you press set, you can see the cue point is made there. Then when you press this little arrow button, it's gonna bring you back no matter where you are on the track, it's gonna bring you back. Look, I went all the way to the end and now we can go back there. Great way for queuing up your track and getting ready to do your mix. Next over here, play and pause, one of the most important buttons. This is how you are going to play your tracks or pause your tracks. Right there, it works very good. Now I'm gonna show you some other stuff that you could customize on this app and other features that you could get if you so wish to. This one right here, it's a little bit different than the iPad app because it is a laptop app. So there's this up here and there's some more stuff. There's no middle button where you could just select your settings. So here, this first one, well, first I'm gonna go over here. This is your Main volume, you could adjust the main volume, also do Ableton Link. I will make a separate video about Ableton Link for this app. Next, you have record. You could record audio and video. This app does have a great video mix section. I will get to that after. But you can't record if you're using anything from a streaming service, so keep that in mind. Next, we have our, our loops. This kind of expands this loop. We got we got one bar loops all the way up to 16 bars. We could also do custom loops down here and we could edit and quantize it. And you could have all these open at the same time. So maybe I'll just leave it there. So we got loops, save loops, all the stuff we need. Effects, this app allows you to use three effects at the same time. So there are our effects. Look, it gets added at the bottom, a nice little strip. And we still got a big view of our library with even these two features out. So here we have echo, flanger, gate. We could turn it on. We could adjust the wet and dry. We could adjust how much of the effect we're using. And then we could turn on all three at the same time. Again, I will make a separate video about how to really dial in these effects, but this is how you do it. If you wanna switch from manual to instant, this means you just have to press it once to have the effect on and you could have it hold or not hold over here with this little button. So now we have what I showed you in the beginning. We have advanced loop section, and then we have our effects. Next, we have neural mix. Again, I explained to you guys what neural mix did. I'm not really gonna get into it too much here because it's a little complicated. So you can control how much drums, how much harmonics, how much vocals, really dial it in and really, really get specific and customize your mixes very well. This app has a lot of great features and I recommend you guys checking them all out. Next is this button here. This will either expand or de-expand these other features. So this one right here is going to be our sampler. DJ, DJ. There are great samples. The change the pack are over here. You could get more if you want. There are a lot of different sample packs to choose from. So that's how you get to your sampler. And then this button over here, it's a little bit hidden. This is how you get to your looper. You could kind of make your own loops and tracks. Like that. It's really fun to mess around with. And then you could change your looper packs over here. So we have looper and sampler. And you see, as you add these, we start to lose a little bit of our library, but we still get a pretty good view of our library. 
Next is over here. What this is going to do is add our cue points. It's going to put our features up here more. Keep in mind what's over here. If you have these three selected, I'm going to deselect it so it's not that cluttered. That's why it allows you to add and subtract these features that are on the screen. So if you don't use a certain feature, let's say you just don't ever use Nero Mix, like me, I don't really use it that much. You don't have to have it there. If you don't plan on using the effects, you don't have to have it there. A lot of people don't use samples. So we can leave it like this so we don't get too cluttered. But with this option over here, we get some more features. So watch what happens. Look at how this is set up there. And then now this is how it's set up. We still get our levels, our gain, our filter, our volume slider, and then the EQs are more in a traditional vertical sense like you may be used to. So I would recommend maybe leaving it on this if, it's, if you're used to other DJ softwares where it kind of looks like that with the vertical EQs. And then now we have our cue points. We could set our cue points here. We could change the color and we can name the cue points. I'll make a separate video on how to set these up for all of the tracks. I recommend any track you plan on playing to color code the cue points so you know where to start the track and where to end the track. So this is cue points. We get eight cue points. We could do kind of more advanced cue points. I'm not going to get into that, but cue points, save loop, pitch cue, slice. We could, have, we could use these eight boxes to control our save loop. You could change these, name these or delete them. You could do pad and bounce. You could really get involved with that. Or you could do your effects. You could have your effects here if that's how you like it instead of down there. So again, there's a lot of ways to customize it so the screen isn't overwhelming, but you still get all of the features that you need. Now you may be wondering, where are my waveforms? You see the waveforms up here. This is how you can scrub through the waveforms, but you can't scratch or manipulate them. That way you could just scrub through the track, go to the and go to the beginning. So we have this button right here. This is our waveforms. You press it once, you get these nice horizontal waveforms. These are active. You can scratch with them. They're beautiful. The app's been updated. You could really see what the audio sounds like by looking at the visual once you've been using this app a lot and it's really cool. There is a drop down menu. You can make, you could adjust these, get really custom with these waveforms. I'm not going to get into it in this video. So there are our waveforms. And now to get to your jog wheels, there's this. This is how you do the view modes. If you use the app for the iPad, you know you press the middle button and we have our different view modes. This app for the, for the laptop has less view modes, but there still are a few. So two decks is the one that we are in. You could do one deck. That's more for organizing your tracks. Auto mix. I'll make a separate video about that. This app has an amazing auto mix feature. Four decks. You can control up to four decks with this app, which is really cool, really advanced. Well, let's go back to the two decks. You can make your waveforms vertical. You can make them horizontal, or you can get rid of them all together. Next thing you could do is you can get your jog wheels. So here it says none. I don't know if it starts it like this or it starts it with a jog wheel, but for now it's on none. If you don't see a jog wheel, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna press this two deck button over here, go to jog wheels, and then we get these really nice jog wheels. You could scratch with them, you could manipulate them, you get the amount of BPM that you changed, you get the amount of time in the song that you played and the amount of time that is left. Really valuable information. Really cool that they added that. And then you can have your jog wheels. And if you so wish to, you could have jog wheels and you could have waveforms, which is kind of what I recommend because that's how I mix. I use the waveforms and the jog wheels. So this is a pretty good setup to have. So that is with the waveforms and then with this selected with jog. Or if you want kind of the old school vinyl, you get this. This is similar to classic mode for the iPad. Now you can scratch with these. These are the biggest jog wheels if you want to scratch with the, just the laptop without a controller. It's kind of hard because you have to use the match mouse because it's not touch screen. The iPad works better for that. But if you so wish to, you can. This arm is active. You could scrub through the track like a real record deck. And then you get these kind of hidden buttons to turn the track on and turn the track off. Or you could go back to none. And then there you have your jog wheel. And then underneath here, if you want to create a playlist, this is your playlist. And then you could start creating your playlist. If you want to learn how to create playlists in this amazing app for the MacBook, check out this video over here. Thank you.